Hey guys, I wanted to take a break from our regular recipe and travel videos to really just double down on the type of ingredients that you use in your food or that you're hearing about or reading about on Facebook, on Twitter, and all these different sites that tell you what's better for you and what's not good for you. It gets really confusing. So we partnered up with Landers just to kind of see from their selection what we could pick up and kind of explain to you guys in terms of food that you would usually eat grains. So everyone in the Philippines absolutely loves rice. But there's a general misconception about rice, the different kinds of rice, and what makes it better, bad for you. And then you have quinoa that comes in, and then you have chia seeds that come in, and then you have frika, you have teff, you have duca, all these kind of new super grains that are coming out. You don't really know at the end of the day what's the best for you. Let's start with the very basic. You've got brown rice, you've got white rice. The big difference is between these quote unquote super grains is that they usually contain more fiber. It usually has more protein, which is good for these guys right here. And then finally, most of the time, the grains that are the best for you are the ones with the lowest GI. There's a lot of problems with diabetes in the Philippines, so it's very important that you guys control your blood sugars and having food that is low in GI actually helps you achieve that. So if you're gonna compare white rice versus brown rice versus black rice versus red rice, obviously you wanna go for the brown, the black, and the red, simply because they're lower in GI, they have more fiber, and actually have more protein, whereas white rice can sometimes be seen as empty calories depending on the amounts that you eat. Let's move on to the next, it's usually seen as the new best thing. Quinoa! Like it's literally everywhere now. It used to be only in New York, trendy, farm to fork to table, to seed to table, to mouth, to, to whatever kind of restaurants. But nowadays, quinoa is seen absolutely everywhere. You even have them in Landers, in these little packs. Already pre-made, pre-cooked, brown rice, red rice, chia, and kale. This is like, the superfood of the future. I feel like astronauts eat this. And here you have quinoa and brown rice with garlic. So these are things that literally, would, 10 years ago, would not have been on your storefront, would not have been on your shelves, but nowadays they're so popular that you actually have them in convenient, ready to eat packages. Why is quinoa so good compared to any other grains that you have there? Simply put, it has a lot of protein. So for grain to protein, which is great because if you're someone that's watching your carb intake, controlling your macros, how many grams you're gonna eat of fat a day, how many grams of carbs are you gonna eat a day, how many grams of protein are you gonna eat a day. Something like quinoa has a good balance of protein and carbs. Now they're saying there's a lot of new quinoas, things like teff that are coming out, you have things like barley that are coming out. They all have very different nutritional schematics. All you have to do is look it up, decide for yourself how much fat do you need in your diet, how much protein do you need in your diet, how much carbohydrates you need in your diet. Let's move on to chia seeds. Chia, chai, chia. Not, not a lot of people, just like when quinoa came out, people were saying quinoa, quinoa, where does it come from? It actually comes from a flower. So it's like seedlings from a flower. Not only are they great because of nutritional value, really high in protein, really high in fiber, and extremely high in omegas. So the good fats that you need. So what does that mean? Something like chia seeds can actually help reduce risks of things like heart disease, diabetes, it can also help you lower your bad cholesterol by infusing good cholesterol into your body. If you need that consistency, that really kind of thick consistency, sauces, if you need to make something really thick and really kind of like hang on to your ingredients, chia would work. Or even things like overnight oats or even jello. If you like jello, you can actually use chia seeds because it does create that jello effect overnight with some liquids to substitute jello. Finally, one of the other substitutes that you could have for white rice that I really recommend is oat bran. Oat bran is simply the husk that comes from the oat seed, so it carries so much fiber. So this is something that can really just help you lower your cholesterol, can help prevent heart diseases, and at the end of the day, it can help with weight loss. These kinds of food, especially with high fiber and high protein, will keep you satiated. What does that mean? It just keeps you satisfied longer, right? So if you eat something that's really high in fiber, really high in protein, compared to something that's just high in carbohydrates, but low in fiber and low in protein, this will actually keep you full for two, three, four, five hours. Whereas if you're just eating sugar or just a bowl of white rice, you'll eat it, but what happens in two hours? You want another bowl of white rice. So, hope that helped. It's a lot of information, a lot to process. I guess the fat kid inside is back. We're gonna talk about health, we're gonna talk about diet, we're gonna have more and more videos like these coming out in the next few weeks, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Subscribe if you do.